Anytime you open up the Excel program, Microsoft has its defaults set, and I want to show you three of them that you can change or customize. For example, the color of the window frame of Excel, and also the ribbon. The default color is silver, but I changed mine to blue, and I'll show you how to change that in just a second. The second default that I want to show you that you can change is going to be the font. Every time you open up Excel, it's going to be Calibri size 11, and I don't mind coming up here and changing it if I need to make a few changes, but if I typically use another type of font like Arial, I don't want to have to keep coming up here and changing it over and over again for each one of these cells or a range of cells. Instead, I want to set that, the font type Arial, as the default, and also maybe size, a different size like size 10. And then finally, if I come up here on the Quick Access Toolbar and I click Save, it has a default save location. Typically, it's in the Libraries folder, the Documents. Double click on that. Anytime you create a new workbook and you click Save, it'll first take you to the folder here. If you don't like this folder and you want to save it to another folder or some other place on your desktop or your computer, just come over here and navigate around to your desktop and another folder. But again, the default location will be your Documents folder. Like I said with my font, I don't mind making changes every now and then, but if I constantly save it to a folder or to my desktop, I don't want to have to keep coming up here and clicking and navigating around to get to my default location. Let me go ahead and click Cancel, and so to go ahead and make changes, or these three default changes, come up here, click on the File tab so we can go backstage and down to the Options, click on that. You can see I'm in the Excel Options window. Over to the left-hand side, you have a bunch of tabs. The one that's highlighted here is the one that we're on over in this window, which is the general options. And down here, there's the color scheme. Click on the drop-down arrow. The default was silver, but I changed mine to blue. How about if we go to black? And then click OK. Now I want you to know that if you change this color for one Office application program like Excel, you update and change it for all the Office 2010 applications. How do I know? Well, let's take a look going to come down here and right click on the uh, Microsoft Word 2010 button, get my jump list, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new Word document. And what color is it? The ribbon's black and also the window frame, the same color as Excel. So like I said, it doesn't matter if you change the color in Word or Access, it updates all of the Office 2010 applications to that color. Let me go ahead and close out and go back to Excel. Ugh, let me change it back to blue, click on the File tab, go down to the Options, and change it back to blue. And then just below that you have the default font type and size. But wait a second, I thought that the default font here was Calibri, not this what is body font. Well body font's default font is Calibri, but it's also a dynamic font if you use the feature themes. Now we haven't covered themes, we'll cover that in a later training video. What that means is that you can update all of the fonts in all of these cells in all of your worksheets in your entire workbook with a single click. If you like that, then you'll have to leave it as body font and the default will always be Calibri, which means that if you want to be able to change this, then you'll have to use themes to be able to update all of the fonts within your workbook in a single click. So there's some pros and there's some cons, so I will ask you to watch my themes training video. Let me give you just a small sample. If I go ahead and leave it as that, click OK. Of course, we change the uh, color theme back to blue. And let's say I come over here and I type in some text. And I know we haven't covered how to start entering in text, numbers, or data. We'll do that in the next training video, but bear with me. And let's say I come down here to the second worksheet and I type in some more fancy text. Okay. Like I said, if I leave the default font as the body font, which is going to be the default Calibri font, then I can go ahead and automatically update the fonts in all of these cells and all of these worksheets in a single click. Where do I go to do that? Well, I go to the Page Layout tab, and like I said, we're talking about themes, and we're working with the font themes. Click on the drop-down arrow, and you've got a bunch of themes. Notice that when I start hovering over these different themes, if you look at the spreadsheet behind here, it starts updating and changing to different font types, like Arial, Times New Roman. You may be looking at this going, well, which one is it, Arial or Times New Roman? Well, the first name here is the name of the theme, Office Classic. The second name is the name of the headings, so if we have headings in there, it would change to Arial. And then this is the body font. So if I click on this, the body font for all of the cells and all the worksheets in this entire workbook in a single click has changed now to Times New Roman. How do I know? Well, I can either 
right click, and you can see Times New Roman, or let me click off in a blank area. Come up to the Home tab, and there it is, Times New Roman. Let me go back to Worksheet 2. Hey, Times New Roman. Click in the cell, Times New Roman. So if you want to be able to update or change everything at once, work with themes. That doesn't mean that you can't click in another cell and just say, okay, for this cell, instead of Times New Roman, let me make it some other font and select it. When you do that, you'll still be able to update all of the other cells in a single click by using the font themes. But when you change that single cell, it won't come along with the rest of the crew here. You see, Excel has to have a pattern to go with. If you start changing some cells and you don't stick with the themes back here on the page layout, then all the other cells will update except for the ones that you ventured off or you veered off with a change for that particular cell. Like I said, we'll keep it simple. You want to watch my themes training video. So to sum it up, let me go back to the File tab, down to the Options. And if you want to be able to change all your fonts and all the cells and all the worksheets in a single click, then stay with body font. If you want to keep it static, like, you know what, I'm not that particular, I'm going to go ahead and click on the drop down arrow, select Arial, change the size to 10, and then click OK. Then it tells me in order for this default to take effect, I gotta close Excel and then I can open it back up and we'll be able to see it. Let me close out, I'm not going to save it. Double click on the shortcut on my desktop, open it back up, and there it is, the default's Arial size 10. So if I come over here, and I type in some text, and then I come up here and click on the page layout, and I say, hey, I want to be able to change all of the fonts and all of the cells and all the worksheets by using themes. Forget it, you broke the code. You're not using the default body font, which is Calibri, which is a code for the themes that when you click on the drop-down arrow, I can move it all around and nothing changes. I can select Cambria as the body font, and if I click here, go to the Home tab, yeah, it doesn't work. Excel tries to work off of codes and patterns, and if you break that code or break that pattern, well, you're on your own. doesn't mean that you can't go back and change your default back to body font, but that's something that you can decide. At least for me here, I can go ahead and if I need to make any changes, I can select that cell and click on the drop-down arrow and choose Calibri if I want to go back to Calibri. Finally, let's come up here and click on the File tab, go down to Options, because I want to be able to go to the Save tab here and show you that you can change the default file location when you click Save. As I mentioned, my default was to the desktop. So all you need to do is understand the coding here. When it comes to saving a file, it's going to start off of your C drive. Then you have a colon backslash users colon backslash then the name of the user who's logged in. I'm logged in under training backslash the desktop. Now on my desktop, I have a folder. It's called Exercises. So I'm going to click up here, type in the backslash, and that backslash key is the key just above the Enter key on the keyboard. Go ahead and type in the name of the folder. So you can see the address. It takes me from my main hard drive, the users, who's logged in, what user, training. On the desktop, I have this exercises folder. So if I click OK, and I come up here and I click Save, hey, it dumped me right into the Exercises folder on my desktop. You click Cancel, Close Out, Don't Save, Double Click, Open Up Excel, let me test it again, click Save, right to the Exercises folder on my desktop. So that way, by default, it always takes me to that, and I can go ahead and type and give it a name for my workbook, and then click Save, but, you know, you're not stuck here, it just means that by default it takes you to the folder. If you want to be able to go to some other place every once in a while, Come over here in the navigation pane, click on the desktop, and navigate through the folders on your desktop, or if you're finding by default you're going to another folder, more often than not, change the default save location to that folder.